University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. And so we reach the quarterfinals. Out of the 130 or so teams who apply to compete in this contest, 28 made it to the first round, 16 entered the second round, and now only eight remain. They're Emmanuel College Cambridge, St John's College Cambridge, Ulster University, Edinburgh University, Bristol University, Newcastle University, Fitzwilliam College Cambridge and Merton College Oxford. For this stage of the competition, the rule devised by Torquemada in the 1480s demands that a team must win two matches in order to reach the semi-finals. Lose two matches and you go home. A team that wins one match but loses another has to play again and win to qualify. From now on, the questions get just a little bit harder. The team from Bristol University have reached this stage without being greatly troubled by their opponents, beating Trinity College Cambridge by 230 points to 95 in round one, and the last time we saw them sending home Trinity College Oxford by 205 to 100. Their average age is 22. Let's meet them again. Hi, I'm Ollie Bowes. I'm from Market Harbour in Leicestershire, and I'm studying music. I'm Kirsty Biggs. I'm originally from Southampton, and I'm doing a PhD in mathematics. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Sam Hosgood. I'm from Bedford, and I do chemical physics. Hi, I'm Dom Hewitt. I'm from Stroud in Gloucestershire, and I study English. Now, the team from Newcastle University have arrived here without being unduly vexed by Sheffield Hallam University, whom they beat in round one by 170 points to 40, or by their second round opponents, the University of Southampton, whom they dispatched with a margin of 215 points to 130. With an average age of 29, let's meet the Newcastle team again. Hi, my name's Jack Reynard. I'm from Leeds and I'm studying medicine. I'm Molly Nielsen, I'm from London and I'm studying medicine. And here's their captain. Hi, I'm Jonathan from Newcastle upon Tyne and I'm studying for PGCE. Hi, my name's Adam Lowry, I'm from Sunderland and I'm reading chemistry. Right, let's just get on with it then. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start of a ten. The phrase, that sharp female newly born, refers to what device in Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities? <laughs> Elf Bristol Bones. The guillotine. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on an author, Bristol. Firstly, the September 2016 update to the Oxford English Dictionary marked the centenary of the birth of which British author with revised entries of several words, including frightsome, splendiferous and human being. Is that a Roldal? No. Yeah. A Roldal. Correct. Originally a dialect word meaning stingy, what word developed in American usage to mean scrupulous and then stylish or smart? Dahl brought it to a wider audience in its sense of delicious or enjoyable, for example, in James and the Giant Peach. Scrumptious. Scrumptious. Indeed. Appearing in the title of his first novel, published in 1943, what word did Dahl, an RAF pilot, popularise in its sense of a mischievous sprite imagined as the cause of mishaps to aircraft? Gremlin. Gremlin? Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Which African country's lowest elevation is about 1,400 metres? Uh, Hi Newcastle Nielsen. Djibouti? No, you lose five points. Higher than the summit of Ben Nevis. Around the size of Wales, Devon and Cornwall combined, it gained independence from Britain in 1966 and is entirely surrounded by the Republic of South Africa. Bristol Hosgood. Lesotho. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses, Bristol, are on temporary capital cities. Which city was designated the temporary capital of Lithuania between 1920 and 39, Vilnius being under Polish control? Anyone know any other city? <laughs> no, sorry. It's Kaunas. Secondly, which city on the River Loire briefly acted as the seat of the French government in June 1940 because of the imminent invasion of Paris before another temporary capital was established at Vichy the following month? Nantes? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, it was Tours. Mm -hmm. 
And finally, which port in South Korea was named as its country's temporary capital during the Korean War? It was one of the few large cities in the South not to be occupied by North Korean forces. Incheon? Incheon? No, it's Busan. Ten points for this. Which prominent character in the Harry Potter world has a given name that derives from that of the Greek messenger of the gods? She shares this name ah, with the Queen of... Newcastle Noble. Hermione? Hermione is right. <laughs> Your first bonuses, Newcastle, are on star clusters. M13 in the constellation Hercules is an example of what type of star cluster? In contrast to open clusters, they may have many thousands of stars held together by gravity in a relatively dense spherical arrangement. A globular cluster. Correct. Containing the star Alcyone, and also known as the Seven Sisters, which open star cluster in the constellation Taurus is named after the daughters of the Titan Atlas in Greek mythology? The Pleiades. Correct. Chrysippe, also known as the Beehive Cluster, is a major open star cluster located in which other zodiacal constellation? Uh, Cancer. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Drop this up before you buzz. Using a UK standard computer keyboard, what is the result of multiplying together the three numbers that share a key with the pound sign, the dollar sign, and the percentage sign? Newcastle Reynard. 60. 60 is correct. Three by four by five. <laughs> These bonuses are on a painting technique, Newcastle. What name is commonly given to the painting technique prominent in Neo-Impressionism that uses dots of colour which, from a distance, visually blend together? Uh, pointillism. Correct. The term peinture au point was coined in 1886 by the critic Félix Fénéon to refer to the works of which artist? His paintings in the pointillist manner include bathers at Anier. Cézanne? Cézanne? Yeah. Surat? Surat is correct. Which post-impressionist painter moved to Anier in 1887 and adopted pointillist techniques in many of his works, notably in his self-portrait of 1887, now in the Art Institute of Chicago? Yes. Van Gogh? Correct. We're going to take a picture around now. Your picture starter, you're going to see a map of the early Holy Roman Empire with one of its German stem duchies highlighted. Ten points if you can identify the duchy. Bristol Bowes. Schleswig. Anyone like to buzz from Newcastle? Newcastle Nielsen. Holstein. <laughs> no, it's Saxony. So, picture bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this starter question. Fingers on the buzzers. What's being described? Moko is the form practised by the Maori people, while a traditional style associated with the Japanese Yakuza is... Bristol bows. Tattoos. Tattoos is correct, yes. <laughs> so, we follow on from Saxony in the picture starter with three more stem duchies that formed the early kingdom of Germany and the Holy Roman Empire. Five points for each you can correctly identify. Firstly, the duchy marked A. Well, it's around, like, modern-day Baden-Württemberg. So would it be Baden or... I don't know. Or Baden or Baden-Württemberg? Okay. Baden? No, it's Swabia. Secondly, the duchy marked B. I Rhineland? No, that's Franconia. And finally, the duchy marked C. Bavaria. Bavaria? It is Bavaria, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. A group of infectious diseases caused by rickettsia bacteria and transmitted by lice, fleas, mites or ticks, which disease is associated with overcrowded and ah, unhygienic... Newcastle Nielsen. Typhus. Typhus is correct. <laughs> OK, you get a set of bonuses on insects, Newcastle. With more than 100,000 species and including bees, wasps and ants, which insect order has a name meaning membrane wings? Hymenoptera. 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 Correct. Including dragonflies and damselflies, which order of more than 5,000 species has a name derived from the Greek word for tooth? Dendopra. 
Dentoptera. Dentoptera? No, they're Odonata. And finally, including the caddisflies, which insect order has a name that means hairy winged? Tricoptera. Say it again. Tricoptera. Tricoptera? Correct. Ten points for this. In 1791, what seven letter word did the revolutionary Bourbon prince Louis Philippe Joseph, Duke of Orleans, adopt as his by name? The same word forms part of a tripartite motto closely associated with the French Revolution. Newcastle Noble. Egalité? Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the novels of Saul Bellow. Firstly, for five points, The Adventures of Augie March fictionalises a real-life incident in which Bellow arrived in Mexico too late to see which exile who was murdered the morning they were due to meet. Trotsky. 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 Yeah. Leon Trotsky? Correct. Bellow's final novel, Ravelstein, fictionalised the life of which US philosopher he wrote the provocative 1987 work, The Closing of the American Mind? I don't know. Oh. Rules? John Rules? No. Oh, yeah. John Rules? No, it was Alan Bloom. If I'm out of my mind, it's all right with me. This is the opening thought of which of Bellow's title characters, a Jewish intellectual in a novel of 1964? Herzog. Herzog is right. Ten points for this. <laughs> what four-letter word denotes the Hindu festival commemorating the triumph of Narendra... Newcastle Nielsen. Holy. Holy is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on logic, Newcastle. In mathematical logic, what name is given to a composed statement that is always true, regardless of the truth of the partial statements used in its composition? More. Do you know any? Do you know? Law. Law? It's tautology. Born in 1806, which English mathematician gives his name to the so called law or logical relation that can be expressed as the negation of A or B is equivalent to not A and not B? Boole? or Bayes? Boole? No, it's De Morgan. And finally, what two-word Latin phrase is used for the logical rule that states that if A is true and A implies B, then B is true? We don't, don't know. Sorry, we don't know. The modus ponens. Ten points for this. Which genus of the P family links an influential sutra of Mahayana Buddhism, a Baha'i temple in New Delhi, a tribe encountered by Odysseus and his men during their return from Troy, and a position in yoga. Bristol Bones. Lotus. Lotus is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on molecular biology. What term is defined as the entire complement of proteins of a cell, tissue, or organism at a particular time? Oh. No, sorry, no idea. It's a proteome. From the Greek for to move, what term denotes an enzyme that adds phosphate groups to other molecules, for example, proteins and lipids? A transfer? That's a kinase. And finally, phosphate groups are one of the building blocks of the nucleotide ATP. For what do those letters stand? Adenosine triphosphate. Correct. We're going to take a music line now. If you're a music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music by an American composer. Ten points if you can identify that composer. Bristol Bones. Uh, glass. It is Philip Glass, yes. <laughs> it's the opening of Glassworks. The minimalist composer Philip Glass celebrated his 80th birthday earlier this year. For your music bonuses, three more composers have written music in a minimalist form. For five points in each case, simply give me the name of the composer. Firstly... Steve. Steve Reich. It is Terry Riley, I'm okay. afraid. Secondly, I want the name of this contemporary British composer. Ooh. 
nominate Bows. Bert Whistle. No, that's Anna Meredith. And finally. We'll try Steve Reich again. It is, yes, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Ten points for this. Listen carefully. In increasing order of orbital radius, the initial letters of the inner moons of which planet spell out the word met? Newcastle Reynard. Titan? Oh, Saturn. Well, I'm sorry, I've got to take the first answer you give, and you said Titan. Bristol Hosegood. Saturn. Saturn is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses this time, Bristol, are on mothers, specifically those who have given birth to two kings of England or Great Britain. In each case, listen to the description and name the Queen and both her crowned progeny. Firstly, born circa 1122, died in 1204, probably at Fontrevo in Anjou. And Henry the Richard the First and John. Okay, I can I nominate you? So we, we okay, are. Eleanor of Aquitaine. Yeah, we'll nominate. Richard, yeah. uh, nominate Bose. Uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine and Richard the First and John. Correct. Secondly, born in Paris in 1609, died in 1669 near Paris. Um, Henrietta Marie, Charles James I and James II. Okay. Oh, sorry, um, sorry, Charles II and James II. Okay. Henrietta Marie, Charles II, James II. Yes, Henrietta Maria, yes. And finally, born at Mirau in North Germany in 1744 and died at Kew Palace in 1818. Catherine? Yes. Yeah. Catherine, George IV, William IV. Right. Catherine, George IV, William IV. Charlotte of Mecklenburg was oh. George IV and William IV. Okay. Ten points for this. A manor house in the Cotswolds, villages in Somerset and Huntingdonshire. Bristol Hewitt. Four quartets. Four quartets is right. <laughs> Your bonuses are on politics and social science. In each case, give the single word that completes these titles. All three answers end in the letters ISM. First, Roger Scruton's 2006 work, A Political Philosophy, Arguments for What? Conservatism. Conservatism. Conservatism is correct. Secondly, complete the title based on a website project, Laura Bates' 2014 work, Everyday Feminism. What? Feminism. No, it's sexism. Um. And finally, Slavoj Žižek's 2014 work, Absolute Recoil, towards a new foundation of dialectical what? Materialism? Materialism? Materialism is right. Ten points for this. I need a precise number here. The human body has how many thoracic vertebrae? Bristol Hosegood. Nine. Anyone like to buzz from Newcastle? Newcastle Reynard. Twelve. Twelve is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses, Newcastle, are on genetics. From the Greek for many forms, what term describes cells with more than the normal diploid set of chromosomes? Polymorphs. No, they're polyploid. Secondly, extracted from autumn crocus, what agent may be used to induce polyploidy in plants? Colchicine. Do you know what it is? No. No. Colchicine? Uh, Colchicine? Colchicine, I think it's normally called, yes. And finally, colchicine inhibits microtubule formation. To which protein does colchicine bind to achieve this effect? It causes gout. It causes gout. I think it's tubulin. Tubulin. Yeah. Tubulin. Did you say gout? Jack, what are you saying? Come on. Tubulin. Tubulin is correct. Ten points for this. What surname links the author of Death in the Afternoon with the founders of the fashion house, Red or Dead? Newcastle Noble. Christie? No, anyone like to buzz from Bristol? Bristol Hewitt. Smith. No, it's Hemingway. Ten points for this. Similar to the bilberry, plants of the genus Galeusachia have what common name? It's the forename of an enduring figure of American literature. The title... Bristol Bones. Huckleberry. Huckleberry is right. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on battles of the Civil War. Firstly, for five, taking place on the evening of July the 2nd, 1644, 
What is often cited as being the largest battle fought on English soil? Edge Hill. Edge Hill, yeah. 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 Edge Hill? No, it's Marston Moor. Oh. In March 1646, the last Royalist field army was destroyed at which battle in Gloucestershire, effectively marking the end of the First Civil War? Tewkesbury? No, that was at Stowe on the World. Mm. Tewkesbury, I think, was in the Second yeah. Civil War. Yeah. Which decisive parliamentarian victory of 1648 was the largest battle of the Second Civil War? It takes its name from a city in central Lancashire. Preston? Oh, yeah. Preston. Preston, Preston is Hull. correct. <laughs> Right, we're going to take the second picture round now. For your picture starter, you'll see a painting of a mythological figure. For ten points, I want you to identify that figure. Newcastle Noble. Uh, Andromeda? It is Andromeda, yes, by Dore. <laughs> Chained to a rock as an offering to the sea monster Cetus before her rescue by Perseus. For your bonuses, three more depictions of Andromeda. In each case, I want the name of the artist for five points. Firstly, this French artist. Cezanne? I think so, yeah. No. Cezanne? No, that's by Delacroix. Secondly, the Polish artist who painted this. Name starts with L. <laughs> it's like Lushenko or something. Lushenko? It's something like that. Lushenko? Right. No, that's Lempicka. Yeah. And finally, this British artist. Well, that's. Uh... Ben Jones, isn't it? Is ben Jones? I think it's, it's Rossetti or... Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. Oh. I fancy Ben Jones. Yeah. Ever Ben Jones? That is Ben Jones. <laughs> well right, ten points for this. Answer promptly. Name any three of the five most spoken languages in the UK after English, according to the 2011 census. Bristol Hosgood. Polish, Urdu and um, Hindi. No. <sighs> Anyone like to buzz from Newcastle? Newcastle Reynard. Polish, Urdu and Punjabi. Correct. The other one is Gujarati, <laughs> but not Hindi. So you get a set of bonuses, Newcastle, on dependencies in the Caribbean Sea. The island of St Martin, located towards the north of the Leeward Islands, is divided into two parts that are territorial possessions of which two European countries? France and the Netherlands. Correct. Secondly, noted for its coral reefs and beaches, which British overseas territory lies approximately 20 kilometres north of St Martin? Its chief town is called the Valley. Anguilla? Correct. St Croix and St Thomas are the two largest islands in which group, a territorial possession of the United States of America, located to the south and east of Puerto Rico? American Virgin Islands? Correct. Four minutes to go, ten points for this. Used, for example, in the Kyoto Protocol. The abbreviation GWP stands for what? It's a measure of how much heat a greenhouse gas traps in the atmosphere relative to carbon dioxide. Newcastle Reynard. Global warming potential. Correct. <laughs> you get three bonuses on the US journalist and scholar H.L. Mencken. What is the title of Mencken's magnum opus of 1919, a study of how the English language was spoken in the United States? Mm -hmm. No. Let's no. have it. Sorry, we don't know. That's the American language. Mencken was known as the sage of which city on the eastern seaboard? He worked for that city's Sun newspaper for more than 30 years. Uh, Baltimore? Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore? Correct. A fictionalised version of Mencken was portrayed by Gene Kelly in which 1960 film, a dramatisation of the Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925? Um, yeah, something in the wind. Something in the wind. Inherit, inherit the wind? Yes. Yes. Inherit, yeah. 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 inherit the wind? Correct. Yeah. A starter question. The name of what natural phenomenon links the Chinese term feng shui with the Japanese kamikaze? Newcastle Noble. Uh, wind. Wind is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on words that originated in the Quechua languages of South America. In each case, give the word from the definition. Firstly, a genus of large cats, including the species also known as the mountain lion or cougar. You've got 
Karl Karl was a lot. It's not a lot. No. Yeah. Yeah. Karl Karl. Kuga. Kuga. Kuga was in the question. Oh, was it in the question? Shall we go Caracal then? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Caracal? No, it's the puma. Oh. An alkaloid obtained from the cinchona bark. It's used in the treatment of malaria. Oh, qu quinine. quinine. Yeah, quinine. Correct. Finally, a natural fertiliser found, for example, on the Chincha Islands off the coast of Peru. Guano. Guano? Yeah. Guano? Guano is correct. Ten points for this. Answer promptly, giving the regnal names of any two of the three women who served as Queen of the Netherlands during the 20th century. Newcastle Reynard. Margaret and Anne. No anyone like to buzz from Bristol? Bristol Boats. Margarita and Louise. No, they're Wilhelmina, Juliana and Beatrix. I think they all abdicated in the end, so we get another starter question now. In which New York borough is Conference House Park, which lies at the southernmost point of both the state and the city of New York? Bristol Hosgood. Bronx. No, anyone like to buzz from Newcastle? Newcastle Lowry. Staten Island. Correct. You get a set of bonuses on the wives of Roman emperors. Notorious for her licentious behaviour and political intrigues, Messalina was the third wife of which Roman emperor who ruled from AD 41 to 54? No, 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 no. Claudius. Claudius. Yeah, Claudius. Correct. Deified by Claudius, Livia Drusilla was the wife of which Roman emperor throughout his 40 year reign? Augustus. 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 Correct. Ulpia Severina was the wife of which emperor who reunited the empire in 274? It's thought she may have ruled in her own right for six months after his death. Is it Diocletian? Diocletian? No, it was Aurelian. Ten points for this. Which present-day European country is largely composed of the historical region of Bessarabia and the separatist enclave of Transnistria. Newcastle Lowry. Moldova. Moldova is right. You get a set of bonuses now on world history. In each case, give the precise year of the 20th century. And that was on Bristol had 130, Newcastle had 225. Well, I don't know about you, but it felt to me slightly closer than that scoreline suggests. Thank you both very much for playing. Bristol, you get another chance to uh, fight again. You have to win the next two matches you play in these quarterfinals to stay in the match. Newcastle, you have to win one more to go through to the semis. Thank you for joining us, both of you. I hope you can join us next time for another quarter-final match. But until then, it's goodbye from Bristol University. Goodbye. It's goodbye from Newcastle University. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.